the yam, I am, nyam, my archives, your archives, our archives. But by archives, I'm not thinking of musty or air-conditioned rooms, almost inaccessible, tombstones of some stalwart's art. I see Randy Burkitt waving again. I'm speaking of archives of sound, of memory, archives of the oral, archives of spirit, the library as umbira, the sun piano, on which you play the troubles and the travails of your soul. And if I'd had the time, I would have had the music of the umbira playing right now. Archives of ownership of reclamation, of record, of discovery of yourself in a strange land by the still or termite waters where you lay down and weep, where you lay down and dream, where you become free. The oral moment here as text becoming. The oral moment here as text becoming. I mean, a slave knows that the slave is free when he or she has reclaimed his archives. As John Henry Clark, lecturing his archives without his sight. As Mumia Abu Jamal, speaking his archives from his death watch prison cell. This is the magic and the mystery of the slave ship over and across Kalunga, triumphant passage of the Middle Passage. I mean, we come with freedom archives, without the printing block, without the Roman alphabet. The plantation does not encourage libraries and archives. It doesn't do that at all. It has always not done that. It always inhibits freedom. But the archive of our people, we really need a name to cover all of us who come over on that middle passage, just as we have the song of the Omawali returning to the motherland. So we have not yet got a name for those of us who have come which is very interesting and very unfortunate and very sad. The Kumina people of Jamaica say arrivals. That's what they call us. Miss Queenie says, the Queen of the Kumina, well, my all arrivals, Africa. We from Africa, Jamaica, a barn here. Note the seamlessness of origin direction. Not double consciousness, but prismatic. Colors from a single source of mabra, dark and light. So that the arrivals archive is imminent, immanent. Lorna Goodison's Grandi Nani poem of the Jamaica Maroons, also known as Sycorax. The cosmological and coffer link between the so-called fall of Palmaris in 1695 and the birth of Toussaint Louverture in 1743, the same time that Aluda Equiano is born, these at the start of the classical plantation. Now, these are amazing dates. You might not have recognized that, but you have at the very beginning of the plantation these very remarkable presences of Compter plantation. We have Palmaris, and as Palmaris fades, you have the birth of Grandi Nani in Jamaica, and as she fades, you have the birth of Toussaint Louverture in Haiti. That's not an accident. And as, and as um, Lorna Goodison says in her poem about Nani, 
My womb was sealed with molten wax of killer bees. For nothing should enter, nothing should leave the state of perpetual siege, the condition of the warrior. From then, my whole body would quicken at the birth of every one of my people's children. I was schooled in the green giving ways of the roots and vines, made accomplice to the healing acts of cheney root, fever grass, and vervain. My breast flattened, settled, and moving against my chest. My movements ran equal to the rhythms of the forest. I could sense and sift the footfalls of men from the animals and smell danger, death's odor in the wind's shift. When my eyes rendered light from the dark, when my eyes rendered light from the dark, my battle song opened into a solitaire's moan. I became most knowing and forever alone. And when my training was over, they circled my waist with pumpkin seeds and dried okra, a traveler's jigida, and sold me to the traders, all my weapons within me. I was sent, tell that to history. <laughs>